They begin now. Sounds like Elijah may have won the roll. Yep. Oh, look at that. He opens a single copy of Chaos Space. That's one of the best openings, especially when you re get that access to white and black dragon. But we're going to start off with black metal dragon. We're going to link something into striker dragon, striker dragon effect. Black metal chain link two. Black metal is going to be chain link two. One of the most ideal opening plays. It allows Elijah to make two key searches, both within the same chain link. If an opponent were to happen to have a card like Dolan Lockbird, you would still have already received two of the searches all within one play, which is a huge advantage and of this particular we'll deck. Chaos yes. Space, discard Red MD. And Chaos Space discarding the Red, uh, red MD. So Sorry, even though Chaos Space, again, limited to one, all you really typically wanted to see was the single copy anyway, mm -hmm. because you don't generally have a ton of access points and a ton of targets in your deck. Yep. So here, being able to search out a, deck, a card one from his deck, dragon. looks like he's going for the White Dragon. White Dragon, Fiber Burster. I mean, even with Chaos Race one, there's another card that more or less functions very similarly, which is going to be Branded Regain for the deck. And we mentioned that both players play Bistial cards, and that's an easy card that you can get access to. And it allows you to sort of reuse your resources as the game pro pro progresses. That's right. And we banish the Red, uh, the red Eyes Darkness Metal to summon another White Dragon Wave Burster. And now we take the two monsters to go into the Dragoonity Knight Romulus. You know, this is the cookie cutter, very just simplistic dragon combo thus far. We've yet to see any of the new incorporations into Elijah's deck. He's going to be able to search the copy of Dragon Ravine and, of course, the Black Dragon. What's interesting is, you know, as this combo gets going, what directions is he going to choose to go into? Because, you know, as this deck has evolved over time, what the intended end board is, what the intended yep. sequences is, have evolved. And here we actually see a copy of DD Crow. A DD Crow targeting the Chaos Space, preventing an additional draw coming from uh, the Chaos Space because you are able to put back that White Dragon Wyvern Burster. That's actually two cards that you prevented to get put back into Elijah's hand because the Black Dragon would add the White Dragon back. Yeah, and although you cannot summon that White Dragon again this turn because you've already special summoned it with its effect, on the second turn, having access to a free level 4 extender dragon is useful. So the DD Crow here is stopping two cards. And this is an interesting thing to point out. This is a deck that's incorporating not only the Bestials, but now also DD Crow. So Kaelin's come up to this tournament really targeting the graveyard, wanting to have many copies I of the Bestials, but then also multiple that's copies fine. of DD Crow. Uh, boot effect. A boot sector launch has been activated, and the effect has also been called now. We're going to be special summoning out a... Uh, Rocket uh, Tracer. Effect, targeting Striker Dragon. That's fine. And we have Serenir targeting the Striker Dragon, banishing it. But we're going to Synchro into a 10. That's going to be Bistial Dissipator. This is a card that will probably come up several times in this matchup. Both of these players are electing to incorporate Dissipator and the Bistials in their deck. Dissipator being one of the best Bistial cards in that particular engine. Uh, Lubellion, the Bestial Lubellion has been sent to the graveyard, and we'll get the Dispator effect to special summon back the uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal, and that's going to lead to another summon coming back, yeah, so either no from fear. the head or grave. The Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon was discarded earlier in the turn for Chaos Space. Special no fear, though, that was an intentional yeah. point so that it could be banished and eventually brought back with Dissipator. Yeah, that's some good foresight. You know, link, linking your combos way ahead. I think here's where you make the pesty, and then you go into the triple burst, and you bring him back. And yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Kalen okay. is actually <laughs> suggesting the lines of play, the typical lines of play. Effect. Mm -hmm. He's very familiar. Both of them, well, I guess they are both playing dragons, after all. Regain. Yeah, dragon duelists. As we've commented on before, the format and the actual cards that are legal and the card that have released make this combo evolve, but there are certain play patterns that once you've established, generally speaking, can lead into the same direction. Here, going into triple burst to open up that, links, that link zone that links both the Pisty and the triple burst. And this is typically something that, that ends in Boral End yeah. Dragon. So the spell card that's currently on the field is Branded Regain. That was placed onto the field thanks to the Bestial Lubellion as one of its ignition effects. Now, if anything gets banished at this point, uh, they can be put back into the deck and you'll be able to draw one card. I send him off Sarnir. Nope. And Dragon's yeah, Ravine has been activated, and that's basically been loading the graveyard. Now, Safer, uh, sorry, Sarn Leech Safer has, is one of the most important cards mm -hmm. in the deck when it comes to just cycling your cards constantly, getting more and more draws, because you'll always be able to more or less put it back and draw another card and add one of your high level uh, dragons back into your hand. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and both the Bistu Lubellion and then yeah. potentially Chaos Levianir are just fantastic targets. targets for Star Leech. And you no, know, yep. as this deck goes into the second or third turn, having that reliable form of a resource in the graveyard that you can use to search out whatever you need in that particular moment from the graveyard has generally been one of the big, biggest strengths of the Dragon Link deck, where like their opening one. field mm -hmm. is intimidating, but that follow-up from the graveyard, especially when you combine it with cards like Branded Regain that are replenishing the hand, it's a very difficult deck to combat. The Bistial Magnemite also has been summoned onto the field. This is a lot of resources. Exes. And we're going to... Ooh, that is a Xyz monster. That's right, Atum. Heratic Dragon, King of Atum. Something worth pointing out is the special summon of the Magnemon. Against some matchups, being able to yeah. search your deck during the end phase for potentially another Bestial has you know, marginal degrees of usefulness. You know, if you're playing against Tier Element, it's, it's fantastic. Really you're well. playing against the Fire Ray strategy, not nearly as much. In this matchup, where both players are playing the Bestial package, being able to search a Bestial during the end phase is going to add another layer of interruption when Kaelin's turn begins. Mm. Uh, Borland, target Pisty, target Tracer. Mm. So Borl and Effect, target Pisty, and get back the Tracer. That's going to allow tracer, target Pisty to pop. Mm -hmm. the Tracer to destroy the Pisty, and th that's going to summon out another monster from the deck, a non-tuner perhaps, mm -hmm. and that's likely going to go into a Borl Savage Dragon. Yep, so we got the Rocket Recharger, and now we have Borl Savage Dragon which means Elijah is going to end the turn with the Interruption, with the Negate on Boral Savage Dragon, um, the Negate the through the uh, Boral End Dragon, That's and of course the Heratic Seal, which will allow dark. him to return a card on the field to the owner's hand, and then special summon another dragon from the deck. That's what I really like about the Heratic Seal. Heratic Seal is just one of the best disruptions, I would say. It plays well into, we'll like, darks, say, Nibiru cards like Nibiru, because that's a tribute that's going to Nibiru activate its effect. It plays well think. into even evenly match, Nibiru, because Nibiru. you can just leave that onto the field, Nibiru. and then you'll still be able to get a ton of follow-up. And we see here Chaos Dragon Levianir uh, hitting the field, enters. ripping another card out of Kaelin's hand, and with the DD Crow that's been activated, Kaelin is only going to have four cards to start the next turn. I'll add off Magnamoot. And Magnamoot. Address. And he did, in fact, search Druus Worm, which is the most logical, even if you don't know what the matchup is. Searching a Vistio makes the most sense in this particular strategy. It just so happens to be another layer of interruption in this particular matchup. Can Kalen make a comeback from this particular position? It's a, a difficult one, that's for sure. The board is pretty oppressive. I think that's the calculation right now, is to determine... Is there any realistic way that I can play through this field? The answer to that is open the collection of cards that we're able to demonstrate the fact that the Bistials, Horus, and other dragon monsters are incorporated in this deck. Or will Elijah get lucky and cited the correct cards and just happen to open them in hand? We don't know, but judges are now currently speaking with the players. Sounds good. They have been given the timer. All right, thank you. And the, here we go. I'd like to go first, Good luck. So we see Ash Blossom, Chaos Dragon, Levianir, a couple spell cards. Mm -hmm. yep. Into the main phase. Normal summon. Normal summon out Safer. Oh, Safer. Look at Elijah's facial That's expressions. Fine. Effective Safer. Effective Safer. Uh, using uh, the cost from hand, a level 8. We're going to activate Infinite Impermanence. That, oh, that is heavy. Sure. So, you know, Generally, you use Seyfried itself to search White Dragon or Black Dragon, but here by using Levianir, the hope is to likely search the Bestial uh, Lubellion. Infinite Impermanence there is a particularly rough a card to see because if you just yeah. use Seyfried itself... Yeah, you're going to get air effect negated. Yeah. I will Magnamoot uh, Levianir. And the Magnamoot on the Levianir. Everything got managed. However, there is a Branded Regain. Chilling like 2, Magnamoot. Randy Regain is going to put uh, back the safer, uh, and yeah. we're going to see a draw. Maybe that draw is going to matter a lot here because there doesn't seem to be a lot developed for <sighs> Kalen's board. He shook his head on that draw. Ooh, Ooh triple tactic style, not bad. That is fine. Might be interesting. Do you draw two or do you take the Magnum? So it looks like Kalen's elected to draw two. Oh. You're right. You could choose to take and just continue to just keep yeah. playing with the opponent's dragons. Uh, that talent will eventually find its way to the grave there. There we go. Nothing in res. Oh, here we go. 
Wow, so we both get oh, to see a brand new Horus card uh, from the Age yeah, of Overlord, and Vision Resonator, which was discarded a card from the structure deck Crimson King. Vision Resonator actually is going to activate because it's been sent to the graveyard. So we'll be able to see both of these strategies and exactly what Kalen's been doing all weekend. Maybe this is the perfect synergy that the deck is looking for. I mean, this is working out pretty well. Like, maybe the Dragon cards don't get you there, but the Horus card's going to take you all the way. So Vision Resonator is going to allow Kaelin to search a copy of Crimson Gaia, which has a few different effects. The primary one is that you will have the ability to special summon back that Resonator. You're going to be able to add more cards, activate, add more cards. We're not under a drone lockbird, so this is actually a pretty decent scenario. Now Vision Resonator, one of the new cards from the Crimson King. Activate it. And yep. I'll be able to see exactly how these cards work. Sure. And we also have King's Sarcophagus. So the M. Seti in the graveyard is likely to come back as a free, I believe it's dark. It's a dark type, a dark attribute. And if we can add a Vision Resonator into hand, that's going to be a free special summon of a level 2 tuner. Yeah, I shortcutted that a little bit. So you add it either from the graveyard or the deck, the copy of Vision Resonator, and then you can special summon it if you have a level 5 or higher dark monster on the field which this deck is, generally speaking, going to do relatively quickly. But it essentially is going to act as an extender when you're able to pull these off. That's fun. Yeah. And here, the Bestial Lobelion will be discarded, allowing Kaelin to search for a Bestial monster, presumably the single copy of yeah. Magnemut. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah. Imseti cannot be summoned yeah. until the King's Sarcophagus is on the field. Now we get the special summon to Imseti. You can also special summon, continue your play. I want to go and do that guy. I do. I do. Affect the sarcophagus? Affect oh, the sarcophagus. So this is one of the additional effects. So sarcophagus isn't just a card that sits there on the field, allowing you to summon the Horus cards. It allows you to also essentially turn any card into your hand for a foolish burial for other Horus cards. And now what you'll be able to do is get a second level 8 into the graveyard, and because the King's sarcophagus is still on the field, it can immediately hit the, hit the field. It looks like that's either... It looks like a happy. It looks like a happy. Yeah, it does look like a happy. I mean, you do have the one card that's banished already, so like you can add it back. I think the next play is going to be a special summon. Right yeah. Gotcha. Uh, oh, we're going to go into uh, Magnemut. This now puts the second banished card. Yeah. You need two cards that are banished or in either graveyard in order to use Happy's effect if it were to activate. And now this at least gives the flexibility of having two cards that are banished, and that Magnemite is sent to the graveyard in order to bring back the Bestial Lubellion. And now we'll go into what is likely going to be Hope Harbor. Oh, no, the Zombie Vampire. Zombie okay. Vampire. Uh, so can't be targeted, right? Would sending cards to both players deck to the graveyard actually be beneficial here? It's a play that has some degree of risk. I, I'd say with only one Chaos Space, it's not as risky as it may have been. Mm -hmm. Well, here we go. A month ago, but yeah. it is definitely something that has a degree of risk. All right, we're going to proceed to send cards to the graveyard. Because even cards like Safert mm -hmm. can be valuable for Elijah to have into the graveyard. We saw how valuable that could have been in the first game. So we'll see what the top of the deck holds. We've got Serenir, Triple Tactics Thrust, Ash Blossom. Uh, that is a Black Metal Dragon. Looks like Elijah, by and large, missed any value from the four cards that's off the good. top of his deck, so that's a huge benefit there for Kaelin. Kaelin's going to be able to summon Black Metal Dragon, yeah. still have Red Dragon, uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon in the deck, and not have to worry about Elijah getting any incremental value from that mill four off the top. This is definitely turning out a lot different than I thought how it was going to be, thanks to just the Horus cards now. Yeah, this is fantastic. We're able to see how these two types of decks start to meld together. The fact that the Bistial Yulbelion is a level 8 and then the Horus Monsters are level 8, we can see getting access to the Zombie Vampire oh, being yeah, an integral fine. part to Kaelin's opening strategy here. Now we're going to get a Link Summon into Heretic Seals of Heavenly Spheres. Oh, fancy one. I still need to get my secret. And that's going to get the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon into hand. Wow, the hand's been completely reloaded now. That's the beauty of the Dragon Link-based strategies. Or, you know, what's interesting about Kaelin's deck is I wouldn't necessarily say it's a Dragon Link deck. But just the cards, you know, Branded Regain and some of the other inherent strategies where you're incorporating cards that always search like Black Metal Dragon, it always feels like their hand is four or five cards, even though they've invested so much into the field already that turn. Yep. Great resource management. Like, everything just cycles into more and more cards. Nice. And we get an SP. Now, that was 
uh, using, uh, I believe, an Xyz monster as the material, so that's going to trigger the first effect. On summon, it's going to be able to banish any card on the field. Which is definitely useful. You don't want to pass to Elijah with a dragon on the field. That enables so many different pathways, from getting Lubellion onto the graveyard and then back onto the field, to being used as a link material for one of the variety of differing dragon-based link monsters that he is playing. So definitely want to get that off the field. So there's going to be also another Magnum Mood effect from Elijah's side. He's getting his search right now. I'll add Lubellion off my Magnum Mood. And Lubellion it is. So Kalen seems to have both the Heretic Seal interaction and then the SP Little Knight interaction that are clearly on the field. And then Branded Regain can give incremental value by getting a draw, which is likely going to happen at some point this turn. And it's also if a summon occurs, we're going to be uh, seeing a summon back from the Branded Regain as well. Yep. Activate the effect of Lubellion. Lubellion effect has been activated. Is there a disruption coming from Kalen? We're going to see an Ash Blossom Joyous Spring come down. So it looks like Elijah unfortunately opened up Boot Sector Launch, which in the long history of the Dragon Link decks that have existed, regardless of the way in which it's been constructed and what the secondary packages and the secondary engines have been, that's a card you never want to draw. Well, it is definitely not that great. You lose the ability to develop your chains, you get or other cards disrupted. Yeah, definitely not that great. And you also lose a card because you have it in your hand. Yes, it's generally a card that you can always find by summoning Striker but, uh, Dragon. The only situation is if that Striker Dragon is interrupted with something like Infinite Impermanence, for example. I mean, even if you use Infinite Impermanence against the Heretic Seal, that Heretic Seal still has value once you tribute it off just to pay, pay the cost. And then, yep, and then you would be able to special summon any dragon from the deck, and there's a variety of different dragons uh, that Kaelin could search out that are considered valuable. Safer is probably a great special example. That way there's a follow-up in the graveyard. And if they put out an extra deck monster, yep. potentially you might see a Fallen of Albas going into a Mirror Jade. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Yeah. That was the wrong player there. It's okay. Yeah. These deck lists are very similar when you see them side by side. But I think Seifert is Seifert, probably the Seifert biggest, really the right. best value inherently. Yeah. All right. Now think here. Gotcha. Or actually putting, yeah, Seifert's probably the best one. But I, I think there's already Seifert in the graveyard, the single copy of Seifert, because it got hit by Impermanence on the opening play. So it might be valuable to just put a level 8 dragon into the graveyard or something that you can bring back off of Seifert. The Lulevelion is already there. So I'm not sure what the big value play would be. Maybe Jerusalem? Perhaps Jerusalem. Jerusalem is probably the most logical one. Black Dragon Effect. Chain SP. Black Dragon Effect, SP. We're getting rid of Striker Dragon and Magnum. So this is great. Now the Magnum is going to reliably go back to the field during the end phase. We've seen all the different ways in which SP Little Knight can be utilized over the course of the weekend. One of the key ways is to protect a monster that you really want to have on your next turn, whether that's to be used as link material or any other reason. Now we've seen that from the Rescue Ace players just making sure that they can keep that turbulence up. And find out, even if they banish out their own turbulence, they can just find a way to get Preventer and then just summon it back onto the field, just get the effect anyway. We also saw a Tier Elements player utilize it on Mud Dragon mm -hmm. in order to make it so that there's always yeah, that like ability that. to stop targeting effects against the Rescue A strategy. Oh. Yes, I know Declare Mud Dragon, reliably banish it with SP Little Knight, have it come back on your turn, open your turn up by calling a certain attribute necessary great. to continue playing, and play through the targeting effects. So SP Little Knight, this brand new card from Age of Overlord, has been showcased in numerous dark, different dark, ways dark, this weekend. Dark, dark, very, very versatile. Dark, gotcha. I think Kenneth's playing really, really well into, I would say, multiple disruptions on the very early turn. He has two copies of Infinite Impermanence, one used during Kaelin's opening play, and then one here by Elijah. Normal I have to shut down the return to hand effect of Heretic Seal. Uh, normal summon, not safer. What's left on the disruption safer for Kaelin mm -hmm. with the Heretic Seal already turned off? They would have to be in hand interruptions because the regain brought back the Magnumut, which mm -hmm. triggered its effect. SP Little Knights used its effect, that's why Magnumut is currently banished. The Heretic Seal has already been infinite and permanenced, which means, yes, you'd be able to special summon a dragon from your deck by paying the cost on Heretic Seal, but there's no dragon that you can special summon uh, that's going to have a clear interruptive effect. Drewsworm has sort of a middle ground where if it is sent to the graveyard, but there's no inherent reason why it would, at least by Kalen's decision right now. We get Boot Sector launch activated right now. Uh, then we special summon out the Rocket Tracer. Rocket Tracer activated effect to destroy the Boot Sector launch, getting the Rocket Recharge onto the field. Ooh, we see one of the most Ooh. powerful interactions here is having Nibiru with Heretic Seal on the field yourself. That is really, really good. Wait. And I think not only does that Nibiru, because it's unique to these two players. Elijah is opting to go first. 
makes all the sense in the world. We do see a copy of Drone Lockbird. There's a Dragon Ravine in hand as well. A Dragon Ravine is an interesting one where, unlike Boot Sector Launch, a Boot Sector Launch usually feels bad to draw. Dragon Ravine, although it's a card you generally can get for free through your search with Romulus, you don't mind drawing it because it can work as a starter in some circumstances. So we're going to normal summon the uh, Rocket Recharger, link some of that into the Striker Dragon, Striker Dragon effect, adding the Boot Sector Launch right now. That's not yeah, the most channels. ideal opening. Rocket Recharge is not exactly a card you want to normal summon. And then we see here a copy of Droll and Lockbird. So. Droll and Lockbird uh, will not be able to stop this uh, Serenir. Serenir banishing the Rocket Recharger. That's going to summon out. We're going to link summon both of these. And that's likely going to trigger the Serenir. Serenir effect is going to send one of your branded or your bestial card into the graveyard. Which, if this was a branded deck, we'd see potentially something like branded opening. In this particular deck, we're going to see oh, that sorry. is... I'm an idiot. You cannot send yeah. that safer because this is not the Dragon Ravine. Nope. It is going to be Bestial Rebellion. I was just about to say, in the branded versions of these type of decks, there's a lot of different choices. In the Dragon versions that are strictly just playing the Bestial to incorporate with the Dragon cards, you're always sending the Bestial Rebellion. You know, under the situation of John Lockwood, uh, Elijah's just navigating this actually pretty well. Considering that he's trying to more or less kind of bypass that drone library by putting stuff not out of the deck just so that he can get it from yeah. somewhere else, like the graveyard. Uh, attempt to go end phase. And we're going to go straight into end phase now. But there is a disruption here through the Heretic Seal. Heretic Seal is very, very powerful. This is a, a somewhat mindful play from Elijah to activate the Dragon Ravine and not actually do anything with it because he wants to have a target for the Heratic Seal, so in case he needs to preemptively use Heratic Seal, there's at least a face-up target on the field for him to target. That's right. Now, because Elijah is the one running uh, Fallen or Albaz, this could lead to multiple levels of disruption, from the, the, the uh, return to hand, to the fusion of a monster, to a Mirror Jade. These are all potential. That's, like, that's three lines of disruption just coming from that one card. And that's not something that you would generally anticipate from Dragonlink strategies, a copy of Fallen of Albaz, but it makes Heratic Seal a much more powerful interrupt because not only is it the bounce to hand, which is clearly on the field, right? There's no surprise there. The surprise is, what are you going to special summon from your deck? Well, from Kaylin's point of, point of view, the typical cards that you search, whether it's Magnema, Druus Worm, yep. Safer, they might not necessarily feel like huge layers of interrupt. Fallen of Albaz, though, that is inherently a huge layer of interruption. We're going to lose uh, the copy of the Bestial Lubellion, getting banished by the Magnema from Kaylin's side. And that's going to summon his own version of uh, the Bestial Lubellion, tributing it off. And now we see both players using Drone Lockbart on the opening turn. You notice Kalen didn't activate the Magnemite because there's no reason to. You simply cannot search during the end phase, and therefore you cannot activate the Magnemite. Oh, we're going to immediately use the Heretic Seal. It might potentially be in battle phase because it does threaten. And it's going to be the Magnemite. Alrighty, good sir. The Magnemite can still, still activate hard. because oh Magnemite can add back from the graveyard as well. Oh, oh yes, true. Think during main. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't. Yeah, true. So think during main, yeah. Uh, during main. Yep. Did they activate the Magnemite? Uh, I think they did, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think Halen's just realizing that mm -hmm. maybe perhaps they should activate it theirs too. Yeah, that's a good point. It can summon Church back from the graveyard. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll some people kind of forget this. about that. Uh, I'll get my Magnemoot. Uh, then draw face, you can cut. Magnemoot, add back Met. He, he uh, added back Serenir. Serenir, Serenir. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way that Magnemoot is adding back to Magnemoot. Magnemoot. <laughs> I'm like, it's at one. <laughs> Four in hand, one is the Bellion set card. Well, the field. Strike. Very different from the last couple of games where big boards were being built. This time, people were getting locked out left and right. Droll and Lockbird came in handy for both players. We're going to see if that Activate one set card is going to be enough to targets. keep everything alive, or does Kalen have back. some disruptions from the hand to destroy the entire chance for Elijah to kind of yeah. make a big comeback? That's, that's what you can use the one thing, time. yeah. Xyz. Oh, we're going to see a King Atom. Do A2? Yeah. A Tomb Effect. A Tomb Effect can just summon any dragons from the deck and keeping the effect, but that does zero out the stat points. Also with the Detached Serenir, we'll be able to send another copy of the Bistol Lubellion. That one that was first sent to the graveyard on the opening turn was banished. So this is going to replenish the Bistol Lubellion in the graveyard for Elijah. That's great synergy. Hmm. Even though you pay a cost for something, but you get something from that cost, it just makes it more or less free. 
So Absolute Router has been summoned onto the field. That's going to lead to the rocket package being added back to hand at some point in this game. Oh, look at this interaction. Absa Router fulfilling the requirements of the Bistial Rebellion, allowing it to be special summoned to the field, and now it's both going to eventually allow Bistial Rebellion to put a branded spell or trap on the field, and then of course here search Rocket Tracer. Now we hit a drone logboard just now, so the searching is now going to get cut short. Uh, conveniently, the Bistial Rebellion circumvents that by placing the card directly onto the field, but certainly from this point forward, Elijah will not be able to search the main deck. My grave, yeah. There's still quite a bit of damage on the field here, but I think in Yu-Gi-Oh! nowadays, Rocket you either take them down to zero, or it. more or less, they just have another turn, and they get just to kind of clap back at I mean, you. Yeah, unless it's a Makanko deck, in which case it's going to take four or five turns if the previous feature has <laughs> any indication. Now, maybe that draw actually did a l number here. Azure Router was That's a strange one. not able to activate. Was it? No, I believe, no, I think he did get the Tracer. No. I think there's some type of discussion here as to the, the sequencing of these cards. It may have involved the Droll. You remember the right on your list, right? Oh. Abstrider, yeah. Okay, okay. They're Questioning if Absarator is, is on his deck list? I'm not sure. Already. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. Yeah, uh, man, I have the deck list in front of me. Like, oh, definitely yeah, there. Definitely yeah, there. Yeah, I've been deck checked. Like, what's, what's going on? So, as these players are you know, discussing and the judges are determining exactly what the proceed forward here, uh, based on the current field, do you think Elijah would have been able to deal the remaining damage? It looks like he needs a little bit under about 2,600. I think Atum has 2,400 if I remember. Atum has 24. 24. So four, that's about uh, 4,900 damage at the moment. Okay. And they're going to proceed with more plays now. God. All right, I think they rectified that really quickly, which is good. Uh, yeah, the judges at YCS events work very hard uh, to try and rectify Brandon these issues as fast as possible. Activating Branded Beast Tribune Atom to, attempt to ah, destroy the fine. opposing Branded Beast. Um, so now, regardless if Elijah can actually deal 8,000 damage, that Branded Beast is going to add a second layer of interaction on the upcoming turn. Mm -hmm. We're going to have Dragon Ravine send the safer for cost. I'll send Levinier to Graveyard. Levinier has been sent to the Graveyard from Dragon Ravine. I think that's going to be likely I'll added back to hand. To add Levinier to hand safer effect, add Levinier back to hand. You can't go for the Branded Regain for the draw because we're under drawing Logbird at this point. So that one's gone for good. And actually getting the Atom off the field is important because if I did activate this turn, it wasn't able to attack directly. So as we were doing the math, it was actually a little oh, bit less than it appeared. Oh, I think he has it. He has the damage now. Now he does, yes. Yeah, with the Rocket Tracer, Rocket Tracer, now it will destroy and summon directly from the deck. Oh, sorry, Special Summon special directly summon from the deck. Caliber. And Caliber. That's a tuner, though. He might have other plans, then. Now, there is also the Chaos Dragon Levianir that could also deal damage. It's important to note that he only plays, or yeah, presumably only plays one Rocket Recharger. He does, in fact, only play one Rocket Recharger. And if you remember, the, the game began with him summoning Rocket Recharger. I will banish three darks so he might not actually have a non-tuner Rocket remaining in his deck. So we're banishing three darks from the graveyard. So we're going to special one, Chaos Dragon Levineer. We're going to use the effects of that. Chaos Dragon Levineer is not going to be able to attack it. Oh, oof. That, oh, that is gonna, that's going to hurt. Yeah, that's That's going to be Nibiru. Nibiru is going to be tributing off every single monster that Elijah has on the field because they're all face up. And that's going to be a very, very big token. 41 defense. Uh, think on resolution. Or I guess uh, Levy needs to resolve first. Yeah, Levy Nier also needs to resolve. So Kalen's going to be down to one card, st back, starting right? with two on the well, next turn. Oh, okay. uh, 46 attack, 56. So obviously you need to use the Nibiru there, or you risk it getting sniped out of your hand with a 33% chance. Yes. I think it's a still pretty good point, considering that none of those monsters really you know, trigger in the graveyard. They're not going to gain anything. You're under drawing log, but even if you do gain anything, so everything's kind of been cut off. The fear here is that this is going to have 4,100 defense and then way more attack. Yeah. Nibiru doesn't deal with that on its own. So Kalen's only going to have one card in hand, plus the card that is drawn on the upcoming turn. 
It's for also their sake, you hope that there's something that they'll be able to do to deal with that Nibiru token, because as powerful as Nibiru is, the downside of leaving that token doesn't usually come up. But yep. here, if you can't deal with it, you're going to lose to that token. And it's also not going to be that easy for Kaelin to deal with, because there's also a brand of regain and beast on the field. So if there is a possibility of summoning back a Vistial monster, that brand of beast also acts another layer of disruption. Maybe if your option to destroy that token could get completely removed thanks to brand of beast. Yeah, you're going to need something. And speaking of which, there it is. Uh, then... Now, eating a Nibiru and still hit, staying right? strong. And oh, Kaelin's down to, well, we're going to start with two cards in the next turn, so this is going to be pretty difficult. I Both of the cards in Kaelin's hand are well, going to need to deal with the field. They can't be Drill and Lockbird. You can't have Infinite Impermanence. There needs to be cards. That, Maybe that, uh, Triple Tactics Talents could bait out a monster I'll activation mm -hmm. if you were to summon a monster, right? If you summon a monster and it triggers the regain, you might be able to find a card like that. But both of these cards need to interact with the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting if one of them was Msedi. I'm curious how the Horus would work yeah. here because you would get... Gotcha. We're going to see a Battle Phase directly swing into the Magnum. Magnum gets destroyed by Battle. Well, that somewhat turns off the Branded Beast. I mean, Branded Beast can, yeah. you know, go online again if the regain activates again, the Magnum gets someone back onto the field. What might be the best option is to <laughs> simply just pass the turn because the hope is there that Elijah has a card in hand that doesn't do anything. And now, Jewishman has been added in hand, and Jewishman is a potential option to clear off that token. It is, but it's also going to trigger the regain. I think that at some point you just have to accept that Regain is going to be a yeah. part of this. But at the very least, if the Druid Swarm does hit the graveyard, you may survive another turn. So the problem here is that this is going to bring, yeah, bring back the draw. Like, it's not optimal. Not no. Uh, I guess no, I, I have it because you drilled. Draw, yeah. I will draw Regain. Regain draw. Activate Crimson Gaia. Oh, Crimson Gaia! Mm -hmm. So now we see Crimson. They can add the Vision Resonator into hand. Presumably that's the only yeah target. Yeah, that's, I think that's the only option. Okay, I can do that. I think Kalen has just realized that there is some sequence here that has made made this decision quite easy. So now we are likely going to see a special summon of the Vision Resonator. There is a level five or higher Dark Monster, being the Druid Worm, and that's going to send the ooh. Now we see the interaction as to why the yeah. Vision Resonator from the Crimson King structure deck works so well with the Bestials. The Bestials are all inherently level 5 or higher dark monsters. So with the Jerusalem being sent to the graveyard, Jerusalem cleared off the token, and we get the Lubellian summoned out from that tribute. And that's going to be a level 10 synchro. That's going to be Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel taking out the Branded Beast, and we're going to pass her on. This is a lot of damage. Yeah, Chaos Angel is going to be very gotcha. difficult to deal with with only a few cards at your disposal. So let's see what Elijah is able to do. One of those looks like Quick Launch, which is usually uh, a good card. Yep. But this late into the game with both Rocket Stay Recharger right. gone and Thanks. Rocket Caliber, it simply can only special summon Rocket Tracer. And I'm not sure there's a target in the deck from that point. I will add Magnum. Yeah, that, that, that seems to be... I think that, that line is basically done. So Lubellion has been activated. And we're going to see where, where Elijah is going to try to take this. Now, that's a light and dark material uh, Chaos Angel, making it so that monsters cannot be destroyed by battle, and and I believe they're unaffected by monster effects, activated monster effects. And yeah, whenever you can get both the light and the dark effect off Chaos Angel, it adds a huge difficulty for your opponent. So the Synchro yeah, Monster is specifically unaffected one. by monster effects, which obviously like includes one, itself, like two, but all monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. Uh, and that's what I love Kaling about the Dragon three. decks. Their attack Kaling stat line is just so high on, like, yeah. basically all of your, like, your mid-range monsters and all of your end board monsters, all huge. So now Druid's Worm hits the field because Magnumut was special summoned by Elijah, and Branded Regain allowed the Druid's Worm to hit the field. Branded Regain second effect also activated because a light or dark monster was banished, allowing it to be returned to the bottom of the deck, and a card was drawn. Now this game has been going back and forth. I'll activate Quick Launch. Quick Launch. Gets wow. ashed right wow. away. Wow, one Ash Blossom oh, drew off of the Branded Regain. Perfect timing. So being able to Special Summon Tracer would have allowed Elijah to go into a level 10 Synchro with the Bestial Magnumut. 
Because again, as I mentioned, there are no targets left in his deck for the actual rocket tracer effect, but the fact that it can just serve as a level four tuner would have potentially been able to play through a little bit of what's going on on Kalen's side of the field. It could have been uh, going to a bit of a standstill if they really wanted to, where Especially neither player can get their monsters That's destroyed cool. by battle. If they go into Chaos Angel, they could have also went into like a Dispater just to try to cycle some mm -hmm. of the Banish cards back onto the field and maybe regain resources from there. I don't. So see, here we see a copy of Black Dragon. I mean, one copy of Black Dragon is a I lot see, of resources. I think most of the drone lockwords are done. Hopefully we don't see a third copy because that's just going to slow the game down even further. And we're going to see uh, the Chaos, Chaos Angel, Angel in attack Angel position. One, that cannot be destroyed by battle. Angel. It's going to be able to banish a card. One. And uh, it's going to take out the Druid Worm. And uh, the Black Dragon is going to be able to add the White Dragon. Add White Dragon? Yep. So unfortunately for Elijah, he used two Dark Monsters in order to summon the Chaos Angel. Yeah, I'll, I'll proceed to battle. Yep. Chaos Angel attack Nibiru. Yep. Chaos Angel attack into Nibiru. That's going to destroy the Nibiru with an additional uh, 500 screen. damage. Continue. Going through. Wait, isn't that only synchros? Nope. No, and it does not destroy nope. by battle. Yeah. It is the light effect. Well, both of them uh, that is synchro and specific. And now we're at that point where battle phases are more or less stunned until the Chaos Angels are removed from the field. I'll add Jerusalem. What's interesting about Magnumut is even though it's been limited to one, we see constant Stand streams yep. of advantage from Magnumut yep. just recurring. Almost seemingly every end phase of Magnumut effect is resolved because of branded regain. Yeah, that's something that we've also noticed at uh, Worlds this year. Magnum, uh, even yeah, though there's only one copy, yeah, one copy is enough as long as you can cycle it. And with the Vistula Lubellion, you always have access to it. So here we see Crimson Gaia once again searching out a copy of Vision Resonator, and there's still additional copies to be found because you can always add from the graveyard as well. Well, there is a dark level 5 or higher monster. And we also have, yeah. I believe that is a Serenir. Yes, the Chaos Angel, although functionality-wise works with both light and darks, it is a dark monster in and of itself, so it does work well with the Vision Resonator. Anything on risk? Serenir did not actually successfully resolve because Druid was in hand and it was chained to the Serenir, removing the same target. So as I commented on earlier, once this match was pretty evidently going to be a match between two, two Bistial decks, sequencing the Bistials is going to be essential. That's fine. So we're going to special summon out the Vision Resonator. If we can get into an 8, there's a way to clear off every single monster from what I see in Kaelin's deck list. If we go into the Red Dragon Archfiend, there's a good potential there. But it instead, works well with the Crimson Gaia. That's right. But instead, we're going to see Dark. Oh, this is also another way to get through there. Now Tons that this game has been going on, you know, second, third, fourth turn, it's clear what the Crimson Gaia card from the Crimson King structure deck is enabling in this particular strategy. It's essentially going to guarantee that there's a level sure. two tuner extender virtually every single turn because you can add from the deck or the graveyard. And we're seeing that combined so okay. flawlessly with the Bistial package. And here we go. We're going to go from dark, dark into, a, I believe that was a, an additional summon into Dispater that led to the Synchro. So the, the correct levels were met, uh, were met. They successfully lined onto the field. Dispater now, well, has a ton of options here. Sure. Targeting the Magnumut, Magnumut yeah. summoning it back, Magnumut effect. Proceed to end phase. End phase? Yeah. Sure. Proceeding to end phase. Well, all the monsters on Caitlyn's uh, side are definitely search. safe from battle. Uh, yes. Did didn't summon Magnumut this turn, nope. I'll drop turn. Yep. Just verifying Elijah did not summon Magnumut this turn, although it seemingly has been the case most of the match. There's that hesitancy to draw. Did I summon Magnum at this turn? Just got to double check. I'm nope. sorry, but it's banished. It's right there on top of the banished pile this time. Special summon White Dragon, banishing Black Dragon. Do, uh, activate regained. White Dragon to Black Dragon. Black Dragon is now okay. going to be put back to the bottom of the deck and regain uh, effect. After I search. Oh, no, no, no. no. I'll wait. Not search for my deck off a resonator, so yeah. Yeah, there is a search. There is a cut. And did we get the draw yet? Yeah, it looks like Elijah activated his copy of Branded Regain, and then Kaylin chained their copy of Branded oh, Regain, okay. which meant that the target for Branded Regain that was originally targeted by Elijah was shuffled to the bottom of the deck, the making it so that he was unable to draw. Ah. Sure. Okay. Right, yeah. Uh, can I see your grave? Yep. So the Druid's Room will not activate because of Chaos Angel. Uh, 
your, your dark. There is one monster that can get removed. Oh, man, go. Yeah, I guess it's the Magnum. That's true. I good? Yeah. A bit there. of a standstill at the moment. It's hard to break through the, the field at the moment. When monsters can't be destroyed by battle. But that Link monster could funnel in a lot of damage because it can't be destroyed by battle. You just attack everything into it. Wow, that is an impressive interaction that you just pointed out. You know, typically with Chaos Angel, you think you're safe. But if you put a monster on the field that cannot be put to defense mode, it makes you vulnerable to a ton of damage. I wonder if there's going to be enough damage in this one turn all over the course, all over the top of Dark. Yeah, Kaelin's starting to play fast, potentially worried about the amount of time that's remaining Correct. in the round, wanting to make sure that some amount of damage is done. And now that Dark is in attack mode, damage can be done quite easily. Yeah. Barricade Borg Blocker sure. has been summoned out. Uh, yeah. Crimson Gaia effect. We're going to add likely another Vision Resonator into hand. And there are still two Dark level 5 or higher monsters on the field, both Chaos Angel and Bestial Dissipator. Bestial Dissipator. Special. Mm -hmm. Special summon. It is worth pointing out that Kaelin is electing to search these from the deck. Um, so what, what the Vision Resonator itself is not a great draw, yeah, particularly if you have access to it every turn. So sometimes there are strategies where you actually want to leave cards in the deck because they're good to draw. This is a case where you want to search them from the deck immediately, and if the game goes long enough, then start to use the graveyard effect. Mm -hmm. And we got SP. Uh, anything in resolution? Nope. I'll activate Regain on Chaos Angel. That's fine. Regain on Chaos Angel. Uh, did you cut? Or does it matter? Did I search? I don't think so. I'll just draw. Okay. You're going to draw. Aspie cleared out one card. There's no direct attacks now. Uh, if you do use the Banish effect of, of SP, there is no direct attack. There's no arrow that points there. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're so right, bucko. I have to issue a team. I never received it. That's fine. No. Ooh, yeah. The, uh, I, uh, SP does not offer a link arrow pointing down. You can't just go into a Striker Dragon and keep going. No, he's, you would have to use other monsters on your field. You, I, he's ranked high on life points. Attack position. Are we going to get into battle phase? Everything is going to attack mode. You know, sometimes the clock that we have on the screen isn't necessarily correct to the exact second, but it is funny how just with five seconds left, battle phase was entered. I don't know if clear the Chaos Angel was the correct move here. I'm not sure there was the ability to deal. There's no damage to de You can't use oh, all of yes. your monsters uh, anymore. 35, yeah. 35. No. Can't attack, yeah. can't attack directly. Oh. oh, you can attack directly. Oh yeah, I can't attack directly. Yeah, yeah. it came up. It definitely came up. If you left, okay. actually just left uh, the chaos angel, like yeah. left the uh, chaos angel there, you just funnel all your damage to one monster, and then clear the chaos angel afterwards. SP yeah. Light does have a downside. Uh, well, this time. Okay, for that, for that interaction. Oh, that's oh, gonna be yeah. that's gonna be issued a warning uh, there because that's a that's a procedure uh, error right there. Infractions outside of this this round. Oh, that's very unfortunate. That's why you got to read all your all parts of the cards. The restrictions are what really just cause like cost a lot of people their games. For what it is worth, if you are sitting round eleven, uh, you think you have game on the field, uh, you get pretty excited. Uh, yeah, so it's it's understandable. Uh, yeah. Nevertheless, we still want to play flawless Yu-Gi-Oh all yeah. the time. And with that being said, keeping Chaos Angel on the field longer may have been a more ideal opening, uh, a more ideal play here. Yeah, definitely. I think because with the amount of time that you have, you definitely want to be able to deal as much damage. So maybe not answering to the Chaos Angel first would have been the better idea because Chaos Angel is bigger than Dark. Bestial Dissipator is bigger than Dark. The, um, and you also don't want to destroy the Dark either because Dark has an effect in the graveyard. So what's interesting here is Elijah opens up by summoning Bestial Serenir before putting any other monsters on the field. That way it stops Kaelin from using a Bestial from their hand because if you do not have a monster on your side of the field, your opponent cannot activate the Bestials as quick effects. And now we see Fallen of Aldas at the field. Oh, that, that is going to be destroyed. That's not going to be able to get the uh, resolution. The thing is, even though all the monsters cannot be destroyed by battle, like, yeah, sure, there is an SP on the field. There's a Little Knight, but that Little Knight can just, if you activate an effect, you can just get rid of it yourself, and then you can leave the highest attack position monster so you can keep your life points safe. Do we get that time back? Okay. It's also worth noting that Elijah attempted to summon Fallen of Albaz, but the Bestial Dissipator destroyed it. There's the option there to negate it, but destroying it is equally the same because the Fallen of Albaz needs to use itself as a fusion material, and if it's off the field, it works the same as if it's negated. Either way, it's going to stop the fusion summon. So we almost saw a mirror dude, which I don't think I've seen at all this weekend. I wish I got to see that play go through, but not Sorry, through this field. That's not likely going to happen. Special by vanishing. We're going to special summon uh, uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Okay, it's a pretty good card. Making put back dark. 
using his effect? Uh, yeah, I'll use the effect. We're going to attempt to use SP the effect. SP Little Knight, that's going to clear off both yeah. of them, but that doesn't necessarily negate it. Then Rhythm D will resolve all special... Uh, we're going to special summon out a dragon from the grave. I don't think he has anything in hand. That's yeah, a dragon. Say, could he get the I Fallen of Albaz? But he doesn't have anything in the grave in the hand. Fallen of Albaz does have a cost. I think we're finally seeing the dragon deck run out of gas. Special Jurisworm. Okay. Jurisworm in defense mode. And then I'll go in phase and pass. End phase pass. Standby. Standby. Yeah. Standby. Main phase. Yeah. We're going to battle phase. Well, it's Activate. so luckily they are in battle phase, You're and right there is a monster on the field. Yeah. And Elijah concedes; he realizes that that Drew Swarm 